Hey, this is Marvin from MK Games, and I just wanted to present you shortly my app Fractals and Shapes 3D. So what we are seeing right now is just um, the screen you are facing with when you're starting the app the first time. And um, one of the most important features is on the left side, all those buttons here, that are the parameters you can uh, select. And when you select a certain one on the top, there is written the, the name of the parameter. So currently I have selected the rotation 2Y. And when I'm sliding gently over the screen, I'm just adjusting this parameter, which also leads to a different look of the fractal. On the top right, you can see some buttons where you have a short tutorial where explaining all the features very shortly. Um, and you also have screen recording and the screenshot feature, which you can use when you don't want it to include the user interface in your videos or screenshots that's um, not rendered when you're using these features. And on the bottom right, you have some buttons. The first one is for the menu, which I'm explaining uh, later on more in depth. There are a lot of uh, stuff you can adjust here. Then um, the second one, the button in the middle on the bottom right side is the switch button, which is really important because you can switch between the fractals and the shapes. So basically now we are in the shapes mode. And when I'm clicking again on the button, we are changing back to the fractal mode. And the third button on the bottom right is the mixer button, the, the button where you can choose between different fractal groups. So I have basically added two different groups for the fractals. There are the kaleidoscopic ones, the bulbs and the room fractals. And when I'm clicking on the bulbs, I have just selected the bulbs, the fractal bulbs. And you can switch between different fractals or shapes in this group when you just double click on the right or the left side of the screen. Now I have selected the Julia and now I have selected the Julia bulb. And when I'm going to the shape mode again, then I can also double tap on the left or the right side just to click through all those uh, shapes. And when I'm clicking on this mixer icon here, then I can also change the shape group I'm currently in. So I can select between e.g. cubes or spheres and so on. And in the shape mode, you also can select the color of the shape. When you're just clicking on this um, orange circle on the bottom right side, then there's a color picker popping up and you can just select the color you want for the fractal. Now we are just going back to the fractal mode and you can also do 3D rotation. When you just take two fingers and slide gently over the screen, you can change the rotation of the fractal. And next, I wanted to talk about the settings available. When you click on the bottom right side on the settings icon, there's a menu popping up. You can choose the quality, which is used to render the whole scene. So medium is set as default, which means that you take only half of the pixels available on your device and render all the stuff you see. When you go for the highest quality, it takes some more resources to do that, but you have a sharper view of the whole scene. And when you go for the low settings, you probably have some more pixelated edges on the fractal, but the performance is the best. I have added a bloom post-processing effect, which also takes some calculation power. So when you wanted to go for the best performance, you probably have to disable that one. I've added fog in the distance. You can play around with that as well. And um, as a default, the auto rotation is set to enabled. So the fractal is rotating about one axis the whole time. And you can also change the speed of the rotation and you can for sure also disable it so you don't rotate at all. Then I added a gyro rotation feature, which uses the input of your gyro sensor to rotate the fractal around all axes. And here you can see the fractal group and the shape group to choose from. The, um, the drop down here is basically the same what we saw before when we are click on the mixer icon on the bottom right side. There you can see three fractal groups, kaleidoscope, bulbs and rooms to choose from. And here in the menu, the fractal group option is the same. You're changing the same thing. You're just going through the different fractal groups I have implemented here. And the same goes for the shape group. 
The next thing I wanted to talk about is the background section. So you can choose a color which is applied to the background or you can also disable this radial color feature. And that means that we don't use any color at all and you just have a plain black background. I also implemented a new feature in the version 3.5, which is the fly through feature that only applies for rooms, for fractals from the group rooms. So the first thing we have to do, we have to click on the bottom right side on the mixer icon and have to choose rooms. And now I will also turn off the auto rotation to show you more clearly what the fly through feature does when I enable it you can see that we are just flying through the fractal and that could give some pretty interesting effects also when you are enabling auto rotation. So that could be pretty interesting, I think. Another section is the color section where you can choose the color of your fractal. We have some more simple options like one color where you can just choose a color and that is applied to the fractal. There is also the option to include some occlusion information and that um, leads to a different look of the whole fractal but it also takes only one color which is applied basically. And then we have gradient color options that basically use a gradient we can choose from here. So um, one to seven are the different gradients I've added to this option. And relative means that the gradient is changing relatively to your view direction. So when you are rotating in the scene, the gradient is also changing a little bit. And when I go for the static gradient, nothing changed. The color remains the same the whole time. The texture scaling means that I can choose how many times the um, gradient pattern is repeated. When I go for a very low one, then we can see that the gradient is repeated very oftly, very often. And when I go for a high one, then we can see that there is a more smooth gradient and the gradient pattern is not repeating so many times. The same goes for the textures. There's an option to include a texture with reflex reflections as well. So we can just um, choose a certain texture. I think the brown ones are pretty interesting because with reflections it's looking a little bit like it's a metal surface, which is uh, interesting. With the texture scaling you can change the number of times the texture is repeated and there are some other texture options. You can play around with a simple texture mapping and another texture mapping option. I will just go for the gradient again and reduce the scaling a little bit. All right. In the music section, um, you can enable or disable the music. I have disabled it now because I'm doing a screen recording and that's not too good when you hear the music in the background. Um, when you enable it, you can also choose between two tracks which I have um, added. There is an ambient track which is more chilled and a psychedelic track which is a little bit more psychedelic. And one thing to mention here is that sometimes it could happen that when you have your phone in the mute mode then you don't hear the music. So you have to disable the mute mode on your phone and then you should hear the sounds when you enable the music. There is a section for user interface where you can just um, remove some user interface elements. We can remove the screenshot button here. You can see that it removes the top right buttons here. And you can also remove or add the fractal name and the parameter name here in the user interface. And when you disable all these options, the user interface looks more clear. And the last section are the presets. So what you can do is you can um, just play around with all those options I showed before. And then when you see something you really like, let's say I like this fractal, then I go for a name, my fractal. And I'm just uh, clicking to save as. And now this fractal is saved as a preset. 
That means that the setting you have saved is persisted the whole time. So when you're um, closing the app or restarting your phone, the settings are saved. When you delete the app, the settings are gone. But when you keep the app on your phone, the settings will persist. Um, I will change the fractal so you can see that we can reload the settings. So I will just go for another color mapping option and when I'm going back here to the fractal preset section, I will choose my fractal, which I have saved before. And when I click on load, then we have the same settings as before. So you can choose all your favorite settings you have and just reload them at every time you want. And the same goes for the shapes as well. So I hope the, the short um, tutorial has made all the things more clear and hope you will have a lot of fun with the app when you have any feedback or bugs you are encountering or also some ideas for new features just uh, click the contact via facebook or the email button and then you are able to write me an email or send me a facebook message so just feel free to do that and looking forward to hear from you have fun with the app and all the best from my side